guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 158. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube this week. Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I got just a little bit of painting done on my Adepta haul, all of the junk I got from Adepticon, and I was kind of in the running to win a Golden Demon. And it was really, really exciting. But first, what I painted. This, it's not even a mini. But the game Don't Look Back has a lovely measuring stick, which is a knife. And I, I painted it like the morning after Adepticon. So it comes, it comes silver and black for the handle and you have to glue it together. But I added, I painted the Don't Look Back logo and I painted the blood splatter. One of my, it's, I've done blood splatter a couple of times when like in real scale, but I take Games Workshop Blood for the Blood God, which is probably the best fake blood out there. And I took a straw from a Culver's, from my Culver's drink, and I dipped it into the Blood for the Blood God, went and then just aimed it and went and then it's just, it blows the blood out and it splatters everywhere. Super fun to do, incredibly messy. I remember we did this on a ter an old terrain build and I got, my hands were absolutely covered in fake blood. And then we went out to eat. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, had to answer some questions, but uh, this this sort of stuff, it's like, our, like a ruler is better, a tape measure is better, but stuff like this is so much fun. It adds a fun narrative element. Like it just helps the brain move out of, we're sitting around my poorly lit dining room table playing a game and like into the world of the game. Like we're, you know, we're we're being hunted by by a masked killer at Camp Crystal Lake and we're running around and we're searching for clues and we have to we have to solve the mystery and survive the night. It just helps you get into just get into that headspace and I really really love it. Very excited to play this game. It looks like a ton of fun. It looks very different from a normal miniature game where typically you win on like points or scoring where this is kind of more of a taking you through like a narrative event. But yeah, really, really excited to give it a try. So often when we play, like we, we game every Saturday, some tabletop war gaming, a lot of card gaming and like board gaming, but it'll, it'll be really interesting to try like a new system, a new type of game and really, really fun, silly, silly measuring tool. I love it. I absolutely love it. But really, the only thing I can think about right now is this. Is this commended entry plaque. Ah, like a little back. Look, so if all if you remember Stompy, my Reaver Titan, like the flagship of my hobby collection, painted over the course of probably close to 200 hours, plus another 60 or 70 for actually building the thing. And the story, does, it's, it's even a longer story than that because it all started out with being gifted a super beat up, broken Warhound Titan, fixing it up, painting it, and then trading that for the Reaver Titan. It's, it's quite a saga of how there's a Reaver Titan currently sitting in my living room. But like all of that, after I finished painting it, I thought this is pretty good. I tried really, really hard. It was two weeks of like 10 to 12 hour painting days and I was really, really happy with it. But like it was it was all around good. And so I thought I, I want I wanted to enter it into Golden Demon for two reasons. Number one, because it's silly, because everyone, most people do models because that's the thing. That's what the competition is there for is for miniatures. And the Reaver Titan, the Titans in general are barely models. They're unbelievably expensive. Nobody should buy one. They're horrible. They're heavy. They're terrible, terrible gaming pieces. If it ever fell over, it would be utterly destroyed. They're, in, even in terms of the gameplay, they're hilariously points inefficient. Like that model, the Reaver is 2,100 points. And if you took it against 2,100 points of almost any army, it would lose. It would lose on objective control and it would probably get killed. I think it only has 60 wounds. Honestly, not that much, especially if you kind of built towards it. Like a mortal, a really good mortal wound army like Thousand Sons could probably actually take it out without that much issue. But I just wanted to put it in the case because it was funny to me. 
And so I spent some extra time like perfecting some of the things I didn't do a great job on in the first the first go around, but there were still there were still flaws. I think the biggest flaw is the trim. I am not I don't have the brain yet for non-metallic metal. I'm getting better. I'm painting a ton of non-metallic metal on my minis. Basically anything that's not 40k and a fair few of my 40k minis have non-metallic metal now just to try to learn it, but I don't have like the brain for understanding the reflections and the bounce light and the secondary reflections. So on all the trim on the Reaver Titan, I kind of just did one inch of light, one inch of dark, one inch of light, one inch of dark, which looks pretty darn good, but I, I could do better. And the base, the base is fine. It's a little bit flat. I was definitely running out of time when I was finishing up the base. And he still has a giant bolt in his foot because he's so unbelievably heavy that there's just no way I could have that foot floating and have the model not just over the course of time start to work its way down to the ground. So the, yeah, the Reaver, the Reaver has problems, but I put it in the case anyway, just to have fun. And I, and so, and, and I, I knew that it wasn't good enough when I put it in the case, I was just there to have a good time. With our, our planning for our Adepticon trip, we actually planned on leaving before Sunday. Sunday is the judging day for Golden Demon, and I'm pretty sure Saturday night is the day that they actually pick gold, which which pieces win gold, silver, and bronze, and Slayer Sword. And so we actually planned to leave on Saturday, which, thank goodness, because I was utterly spent. Like, when we were getting ready to leave at, like, 5 or 6 o'clock on Saturday... I could, uh, I was so unbelievably tired and I still had to drive home to Wisconsin. Like it was, I, I could not have been there another minute. But so, and so I, I, I planned on being disqualified and not getting judged and that was absolutely fine. So I, I took my little slip. They give you a little slip when you enter your piece so with your contact information so that they can just make sure that the model gets back to you on Sunday after the, after the judging so that you can get your piece back. And so on Saturday, I went up to the booth and I flagged, I flagged down a GW employee and I was like, hey, can I, I have to leave now. Can I have my toy? And they gave me my toy. And this, ah, it was, it, it was kind of magical. My piece had already been judged the first level. Uh, Golden Demon has a few different levels. So I'm pretty sure it goes, a pin is darn good job. And then you've got notable, which is a similar plaque to this. And a notable is like really good job plus. And then commended entry is very, very good, potential golden demon. And then you've got bronze, silver, gold demons. And then you've got the Slayer Sword for the all over best piece. And so when I got my Titan back, they, they handed me this, a commended entry. And then I got a teeny bit of feedback. They, they said that it was very impressive, the level of quality over so much model. Which kind of makes sense. Like most of the, the demon entries are, you know, one inch tall figures. And then my guy is a seven pound, three square feet of resin monstrosity. That's pretty good and not bad. Oh, it was it was kind of magical. And, and then it was hilarious because I'm, I'm standing there absolutely exhausted, ready to leave. And I'm like, I guess, should I stay? <laughs> should I hand it back and go to the ceremony tomorrow at four and then be at the ceremony for like two hours or however long. It felt like two hours the one time I went, but I decided I was super tired and I didn't really care. I just wanted to get home. And I think, I think with this, with this commended entry on my desk now, and it's, it's really cool. So the games workshop partnered with a, like a swag company, wicked brick. They make their figure cases that are fine. They're, instead of like one nice piece of like polycarbonate that covers up your model, it's five pieces that are screwed together at the corners, which kind of gives an interesting like industrial look, but it also is like distracting and annoying for a display case. Like we've all seen, like you can just buy them for like, like baseballs and they look perfect. And usually either they're glued, welded, or it's one piece of plastic. I don't know if I like the screw look, but I definitely like these little these little trophy things that they came up with. They look much better than the old piece of paper you used to get. But yeah, I now 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 that I have this, now that I have this for Stompy, I I want to do it again. <laughs> I have a I have a Warhound Titan, new in bag, 
big, dumb, Forge World five gallon bags, but I had no interest. <laughs> I had no interest after Stompy. He was so much work. He's so ridiculous. And I, I was like, maybe I don't have another Titan in me. They're not fun. <laughs> They're fun in their own way, but I would much rather have an army at the end of like 200 hours of painting than another Titan to sit on the shelf or die almost immediately in my games. And maybe one day like a really, really fun adept, like a um, epic game of 40K with a couple like dozens of thousands of points per side. But I didn't, I did not have much juice in me. And then they handed me this shiny little thing. And now I really want to do it. <laughs> I really want to get started on the Reaver because now I have or on the Warhound because now I have so much experience. I know every single thing that went wrong on the Reaver Titan. And so I think I can fix all those problems on a second try. I have a ton of ideas of how to get the reference I need and how to get like the understanding of the model I need, how to incorporate the base into the model better. I like the Reaver was the first time I really did a resin pour. <laughs> and so now I have that one piece of experience. I have a little bit more experience now, even after the Reaver has been completed. But yeah, I just I have so much like knowledge and experience that previously I'm like, yeah, I have enough experience to know I don't want to do that. But now that it's I, I have it in me to potentially win one of those ugly ass trophies. I I kind of want to do it. I kind of want to do it. I have to start almost immediately to give myself enough time to really, really do a good job and to really because I even I think even if I had stuck around with my commended entry, it has flaws and pen plenty of people's pieces did not have flaws like like they posted the winners and I looked at them and they're all absolutely stunning and gorgeous. Kind of annoying that uh, large miniature and vehicle are like shoved in the same category. So you've got things with arms and legs competing against vehicles. I feel like they're kind of two different things, although I'm talking about my piece, which is going to have arms and legs, but I want it in vehicle. So I guess that's a little hypocritical, but it feels a little bit more like a vehicle than Vashtor. I don't know. The Vashtor piece was incredible. I love the weird base with the balls. Ugh. One of the things that was really impressed me with Golden Demon and in the in the winnings, uh, the winning entries, you only see, you know, you only see dozen or two, two dozen. But like in the case, there's hundreds of models. It's kind of amazing. And you see all of these different beautiful pieces of work. It's it's weird to see really good stuff in person because, you know, you see it online, you see it on Instagram and it doesn't have the same feeling as it does in person where it's like, oh, my gosh, how is that even a paintbrush that did this? It's incredible. But yeah, I, I want more. I've got the itch. I've got the itch to actually compete for realsies. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do it. And I could also just paint a normal model and try really hard. Not, I don't have to do it on a giant epic Titan, but I want to. For Stompy, for the story of these Titans. I just want it to keep getting more and more ridiculous and more and more storied. <laughs> So that old Stompy gets this little trophy and then the little Warhound and whatever I name it gets an actual demon sitting next to it. That would be pretty pog. So I don't know. That's what I'm feeling right now. I got a trophy, a really nice little polycarbonate thing. Probably it's actually probably acrylic. Yeah, it's acrylic, but it's kind of nice. Honestly, this kind of looks better than the Golden Demon. <laughs> ah, I would love to. I don't know why I had this thought, but I want I wanted to cut a golden demon in half to see what it's made out of. Like, I assume they're like probably slush cast resin with, you know, a, a painted finish on there and then like an oil wash on top. There's there's a really, really cool guy online, Vulpin Props, and he does a lot of trophies for big companies. He does a lot of like resin pours and clear resins, but I just I don't know. I just kind of wanted to know like what they're made out of. So if I get one, I'm definitely going to be like peeling the felt off the bottom and putting some holes up into it to see what's in there. I don't know why it just interests me. I also wonder, like, do they have a studio like uh, a special effects studio on hand that like they continually purchase them from? Or do they have a shipping container full of these things and they're just using them up as they do more and more competitions? There's a lot of golden demons in the world and they seem pretty darn consistent. So I would just I would just love to know more information.
And those are the, those are the things that go through my mind when I'm unbelievably tired and then doing a lot of driving. <laughs> But yeah, Adepticon was an incredibly fun time. Being amongst all of the miniatures and the games, I demoed tons and tons of stuff. I got to demo uh, the Halo game from Mantic, which it is Dead Zone, which is fine because I really, really like the game Dead Zone. It actually super surprised me how much I liked it because I was I'm really into Kill Team and Dead Zone kind of feels like a slightly better version of Kill Team. Or at least it gives me what I want from Kill Team without some of the negatives of Kill Team, which is that everything is so unbelievably killy that it makes for a really sweaty game. Where Dead Zone is not quite as killy and it's based on a grid system, so you don't actually have to measure anything, you just count the squares. And that sounds lame, but when you're actually playing it, it feels, re it works really, really well. And you don't realize how much time is lost by measuring and thinking about if I move right here, as opposed to one millimeter this way, am I still going to be getting heavy cover? Like just this, those sorts of decisions don't enter into your head and it actually does speed up the game quite a bit, which is what you want. I feel like from a, a, like a skirmish shooting action game, you want it to feel like you're playing like an 80s action movie, not like you're playing ultra chess where the rules don't make sense. I would say the only thing more fun than Adepticon is our Patreon. Over there, we have a new set of terrain every month. This month, it's the modular Gothic buildings. These impressive structures are designed with competitive wargaming in mind. They are the perfect size, shape, and have functional windows for all your line of sight blocking needs. And included are Cyber Cherubs for all your decorating needs. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on here at Eon's Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain. You can follow the link in the description below to sign up to our newsletter. One other little wargaming thing I've been working on this week is I started, I don't know why, but I just started to reread some of the index rules for Space Marines, probably because uh, I played a bunch of games at Adepticon, and so I actually want to win 40k. I've won 40k a few times now against Sean, but I want to actually win like consistently. And so I think one, one of the big problems is usually we end up playing on Saturday kind of unexpectedly. And so I just slap together a list where Sean has his impeccable guard list ready to rock and roll. So I actually wrote a Space Marine list. Vanguard Spearhead Detachment, I think is pretty spicy. And if you don't hear about this again, it's it didn't it didn't do well, but I'm very hopeful. Thanks for watching.